Oh my god, the Star Wars fans are gonna roast me. Oh no. what's going on so today we are in a new location in my room we are at my new desk that I just got and today we are not watching a movie and we are not watching Blind Manor sorry to disappoint but I wanted to start this new little series on my channel it'd be like a once a month thing at like the end of the month or the beginning of the next month where basically I talk about everything I've watched or read but mainly watched in the previous month full credit to this idea goes to Christine Riccio or Poland Banana's books her um stories I ate this month series that I love and I totally am kind of copying. I'm just not calling it stories I ate this month. I'm going to call it just what I watched in blank. So what I watched in October 2020. Um, I guarantee many other people do this, but I'm the idea came in my head from Poland Bananas books. So thank you if you're watching this, but you're not. Anyways, so yeah, um, I also have a big surprise for you guys, which I will be revealing that at the end. Stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, let's just get into it. So I watched a lot in October, mainly because it was Halloween. So I was watching a lot of spooky themed stuff. You guys really only watched me watch uh, The Invisible Man and Bly Manor, but there was a bunch of stuff I watched off camera, um, primarily because I am a part of this film club on Letterboxd and they, we watch one movie a week, so I was watching stuff with them. I'm also a big fan of the YouTuber slash movie critic Dan Merle and his girlfriend Mara, and this past month in October they did a 31 Days of October uh, movie marathon where there was like a movie movie every single day of the month um, that they give us to watch if we wanted to and they were watching them and discussing them and so I was also participating along in that and watching a whole bunch of classic horror and new horror and stuff like that so that was really really fun. I also because a lot of the movies they had on their list or not a lot but maybe like some maybe like a third of the movies they had on their list was sequels or stuff where necessarily you didn't need to watch the or the like first one or the original i just felt like i needed to watch the original or the first one to fully appreciate or fully feel like i'm not missing out when i watch the one actually a part of the 31 days of halloween so let's just get started um i'm gonna try and go in like chronological order as well as by like type of movies so I made like a list <laughs> um, I have all the movies I watched a part of Dan and Mara's 31 days of Halloween um, I have all the movies I watched in preparation of Dan and Mara's 31 days of Halloween um, and then I watched stuff specifically for the Letterboxd Film Club and then I have the like other list everything else I watched and then I have all the TV shows that I watched also just a heads up I'm gonna keep all of these little mini things about what I watched um, spoiler free so you don't have to worry about that this is gonna be a lot but let's go so the first thing I watched in October is the movie poltergeist which was a part of Dana Mara's 31 days of Halloween poltergeist I absolutely loved poltergeist it was my first time seeing it and not gonna lie i should have seen it a long time ago but just just now getting to it it was fantastic i loved the cast i thought the whole kind of behind the scenes spooky stuff that went on on the set was really really interesting i was really captivated by learning about all of that and i just i loved it i remember hearing a lot of people say that back in the day that was like terrifying but for me it was scary but it was it was more just like a fun type of scared I wasn't like actually actually terrified I was just like captivated by what's gonna happen next but anyways yeah poltergeist I gave that a 10 out of 10 I loved that movie that was so good the first tv show I watched in October was actually a show I've been watching um I'm pretty sure it was like August through October possibly maybe even a little before that um, but it was season three, the last season of Penny Dreadful. So I, mm, 
I like the show. I think it's really, really well made, and I think the actors, especially Ava Green, um, they do a fantastic job. I don't know what makes me not love it. I think sometimes it's just kind of slow for me at times, but I, I, I wasn't leaving the show loving it. I just thought it was, it was good. It was very well made. I think my favorite season was possibly season one, but maybe that's just because I've seen season one a couple times. I watched it like a couple years ago and then I decided I wanted to finish the show. So I watched it again. So I knew what was going on for season two and three, but yeah. My favorites were definitely Ava Green and Reeve Carney, which I was very excited to see Reeve Carney in the show since I'm a big fan of him as Orpheus in the Broadway musical Hades Town. So I was really excited to see all that he had to offer in Penny Dreadful. And also Billy Piper was amazing. But yeah, season three, I would give... It was good. I would give it... I'm gonna, you know what, with TV shows, I'm gonna give like a letter grade, and with movies, I'm gonna give a number, because I, my movies, I'm looking at my reviews on Letterboxd, follow me on Letterboxd, but my TV shows, I'm just kind of thinking the ratings off the spot, and my head immediately goes to letter gradings more, so that's how I'm gonna do it this time around. Uh, but, so Penny Dreadful Season 3, I think I'm gonna give an A-, minus, and the season as a whole, I think I'm gonna give a B plus. That's where I'm going to go with it. Yes. All right. The next movie I watched in October was the movie Creep Show by, yeah, uh, this movie is directed by George A. Romero. Probably a lot of you already know who that is. I don't even have to explain it. Um, this was actually the first ever George A. Romero movie I have ever seen, and I didn't love it that much. Sadly, it's um, an anthology movie. It has like a bunch of like short horror creepy stories in it and they were good. I may need to rewatch it at some point, just at the point where I was at when I was watching it. I wasn't that much of a fan, sadly. Um, I would give it a six out of 10. I'm sorry to any Creepshow fans out there. Oh, also I forgot to mention Creepshow was also a part of Dan and Mara's 31 Days of Halloween. The next movie I watched is The Invisible Man, which you guys hopefully have watched me watch. If not, here, here, somewhere above my head is the link to the video. I can also link it down below. Um, yeah, I loved Invisible Man. I'm a huge, huge fan of, in, of Elizabeth Moss. I love The Handmaid's Tale. Um, I love her in, oh, Us. I love her in Us. She's so good. Not, not as big of a role as the other stuff I've seen her in, but she's so good in that. And I've been meaning to start the show Mad Men so I can see how she is in that. I think that was kind of her, one of her breakout roles. So I'm really excited to see her in that, but I absolutely loved Invisible Man. And Invisible Man was also a part of Dana Mara's 31 Days of Hall Halloween, which I also then took advantage of to film a reaction for you guys. Yeah, 10 out of 10. The next movie I watched actually the same day as Invisible Man when I was uh, transferring all my files onto the Invisible Man, I rewatched Disney's Tarzan, which is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite Disney movies. I love Tarzan. I think it's so underrated. The soundtrack is fantastic. I cannot stop smiling when I watch Tarzan. It's one of just my comfort movies. I love it so, 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 so much. And Tarzan is obviously a 10 out of 10 for me. The next movie I watched is another George A. Romero movie. I watched Night of the Living Dead, uh, the, his movie that came out in 1968. Y'all are gonna hate me, but I didn't love this one either. I liked it more than Creepshow. It was just kind of slow. And I get it, I get how it's one of the kind of, literally probably one of the first zombie movies ever, and it's what pretty much all zombie movies are like based on nowadays, or like, it was what came first. Like, it is what made what zombie movies are today, if that makes sense. And so like, I get it, and I really do respect the movie, and I do want to revisit it at another time. Um, but yeah, so I would give Night of the Living Dead a 7 out of 10. It was another movie in Dan and Mara's 31 Days of Halloween. You're gonna hear that a lot because it was 31 movies. The next TV show I watched, which this is another one which I started a couple months prior to October. I think I've 
also started this one in um, August and I finished it in October. It was actually only one season. Uh, it just took me a long time to get through because I've watched multiple TV shows at once. Um, it was Camelot uh, starring Jamie Campbell Bower along with Ava Green, another Ava Green show. I did not mean to watch two Ava Green shows at once. It just kind of happened. Uh, it just kind of happened. But yeah, so Camelot was not that good. Not many people have seen it. It was a stars show from back in like 2011 and they totally set up the end for a season two and then I, I just, I don't think it got renewed. I'm really interested in the whole mythology of like King Arthur and Camelot and I was just really excited to see how they conveyed that whole story and I was just not much of a fan. Some of it was changed. The characters were boring and I was also really excited to see Jamie, Jamie Campbell Bower as King Arthur. I think he's really good in the Twilight Saga. Um, yes, I'm a fan of the Twilight Saga. Don't, don't get me started on that. I can have a whole video just talking about why I love the Twilight Saga. And I also, y'all are gonna hate me for loving this movie as well, but I loved him as Jace in the Mortal Instruments movie. Yes, is that movie not that good? No, but do I still love it for nostalgia reasons? Yes. And I love him as Jace. I think he's really good. So I was really excited to see him as King Arthur and he just, sorry to say, didn't really give off King Arthur vibes for me. He seems like, it seems like his brother in the show would have been King Arthur and like Jamie Campbell Bower would have been like, I don't know, one of the villains or, or maybe the jealous brother or something like that. He just didn't give off kingly vibes to me. Like he gave off prince who wants to be a king type vibes, you know? But yeah, I'd give Camelot, oh god, C plus? I'm so sorry to if anyone who's been in or worked on Camelot, I'm so sorry it was a C plus. There, there was moments. There was moments I had some fun. Um, most of Ava's green scenes were pretty fun, but yeah, C plus. <laughs> The next movie I watched is another Dan and Mara's 31 Days of Halloween movie, which is Sinister, which I was actually really interested to watch because it was one of the more recent horror movies, and it stars Ethan Hawke, who I'm a very big fan of. Uh, Sinister was really good. It was really original, and it was really, really creepy, uh, and I had a really fun time with it. I'd give Sinister an 8 out of 10. That was really fun. Thumbs up for me. <laughs> The next movie I watched, it was actually one of my movies I watched to prepare for Dana Mara's 31 Days of Halloween, a specific movie later on down the month, uh, which I've been very excited to see this one, and it's one that I should have watched years ago, but I just now got to, A Nightmare on Elm Street. First time watching it, um, and I loved it. I loved Johnny Depp in it. I loved the main star, what's her name? Heather Langenkemp. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but she was great. I loved her in it and Johnny Depp was fantastic as I said again. Yeah, I just thought this was a really original idea. Uh, this was also my, I believe, second Wes Craven movie. I'd seen, I've seen Scream. I saw that a couple years ago or maybe a year ago or something. Um, and so this was kind of the other, one of the other big Wes Craven movies um, I still had to see along with a couple more that are going to be, oh wait, no, that's Sam Raimi. Scratch that. <laughs> I think that's Sam Raimi. Um, yeah, this is one of the big Wes Craven movies um, I still had to watch, and I loved it. I think I loved it more than Scream. I don't know. I think I need to rewatch Scream, but I love both Scream and A Nightmare on Elm Street for, like, different reasons. Uh, but yeah, A Nightmare on Elm Street, I would give a 9 out of 10. The next movie I watched in October is actually the first movie of the Letterbox Film Club I'm in. I'll put a link to that down below. So if any of you guys are on Letterbox and want to join the film club I'm in, they have a whole Discord channel and they do a bunch of games and like they do like a film club secret cinema where we like choose movies for each other. It's such a fun community. I've been in it for over a year now. I was actually I think one of the like first um 60 to 100 members, which, yeah, that already sounds like a lot, but now there's, I, I don't know, maybe four to 500? There's a lot of people, but it's so, so fun. Highly recommend you guys go join down in the link below. But the movie I watched from them at the beginning of October was Pink Floyd The Wall, which was very interesting. I think I need to give it a rewatch at some point. It was, I wasn't too much a fan of what was happening. I just wasn't really enjoying it. What I did love was, of course, 
the soundtrack as it was all uh, Pink Floyd music and it was so so good. Um, so I enjoyed that aspect of the movie, but in terms of story, I just wasn't really vibing with what was going on. Definitely gonna need to give it a rewatch. I give it a 6 out of 10. The next TV show that I finished in October was one that I actually had been watching since July, I believe. And this is, okay, this is one of my mom's favorite shows Ever. It came on in the 90s and early 2000s and then after it ended, my mom, while I was a little child, she would have it on TV, the like e-network reruns of it all the time because she worked from home and so whenever I wouldn't be at school during the summer or when I got home from school or something, she would just have it on TV. And so I already knew a lot of the major plot points of this show just from watching it not really necessarily like watching watching it but just seeing it on in the background like I knew the characters I knew almost who every character ended up with what ended up with for the most part but I'd never actually seen the show like all the way through each episode in chronological order watching the whole time and that show is Sex in the City and no I was not scarred by the show when I was younger because E! Network would cut out all of the rated R stuff so it was just pretty much a PG-13 show from the reruns um, but yeah so I finally finished Sex in the City I started it in July and I watched seasons 5 and 6 in October and just like my mom and just like so many so many people in the world I adored it it is now one of my all-time favorite tv shows I cried at the end of it even though I knew pretty much who everyone was going to end up with and I actually want to go into a little bit of spoilers for sex in the city real quick so I'm going to keep up this little sex in the city poster right here while I talk about spoilers um and they'll be over when this goes away uh, I just have to talk about Smith Jared guys okay so I knew that Carrie was gonna end up with big I knew that Charlotte was gonna end up with I can't remember his name right now but the bald one I'm so sorry I don't remember his name um but I knew they were gonna end up together but the ones that I I forgot who Miranda was gonna end up with but whenever Steve was like he, he kept coming back into the picture and I was like they have to end up together he's the perfect one for her um but then let me tell you guys I somehow in all the times my mom watched the show I did not catch any signs of Smith Jared I had no idea who he was so when he showed up in the show I was like I at first I thought he was just gonna be like a one episode and done type of thing but then he just stayed and him and Samantha stayed together and it just made me so happy. Like he's perfect. He cared about her. He cared about his job. He was good at his job. She helped him get to where he was going to be and then he was so successful and he but he never took it to his head. He never like he never all of a sudden like started saying that it was all him and that it was all him that did it no he gave her credit when credit was due that she helped him get to where he was he was so caring he didn't think about cheating once he was a good guy whenever she got cancer he supported her the whole way there he shaved his head along with her i could cry thinking about how perfect smith jared is um jason lewis the guy who played smith jared i know you're not watching this but if for some reason you are Thank you. Thank you for bringing Smith Jared to the world and thank you for making him so perfect along with the writing obviously. But yeah, other than that, I loved Sex in the City so much. I give Sex in the City obviously a 10 out of 10. A plus or actually A plus. Fantastic. Brilliant. Outstanding. Yes, it's kind of like a girly rom-com type show, but it's just the growth of the characters and just how good the writing is and the fashion and just how well they're able to convey New York in the 90s slash early 2000s. I've always wanted to live in New York. That's like my dream city to live in. So just how well they were able to just capture the essence of the city was just beautiful and I loved it. A plus. The next movie I watched in October was actually a movie I watched in preparation of watching the TV show, uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars. Um, so I enjoyed the movie. I was expecting everyone to have kind of a consensus consensus of 
it being a decent, fun, good movie. But then I was looking at the reviews of Star Wars, The Clone Wars, the movie on Letterboxd, and so many people were just like, this is bad, this isn't good. And I was like, I mean, yeah, compared to the other live action Star Wars movies, is it a 10 out of 10 along with them? No, but like on a kind of pilot movie to the show and like an introduction to Ashoka, what's her name? Ashoka, oh my god, the Star Wars fans are gonna roast me. Oh no, oh god, what is, what is her name? Ahsoka, was I saying that wrong? Ashoka, Ahsoka, I am so sorry. Ahsoka Tano? Ahsoka Tano, that's what I'm gonna go with. I've heard people say her name so many times in videos in the past, and they said her name in the movie, but all of a sudden I just don't know how to say it, so I apologize. Ahsoka Tano, yeah. But anyways, I really enjoyed it, so I was surprised by those uh, lackluster reviews. I thought it was fun. I give it an 8 out of 10. I thought it was a good introduction to the show, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. Um, in terms of what I'm thinking of the show so far, so stay tuned for that. The next movie I watched in October was another preparation movie for a movie in Dan and Mara's 31 Days of Halloween, which was A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. This movie was ridiculous. It was not- I don't think it was bad. It was just kind of silly. It had moments. It was fun. I didn't have a bad time watching it. I didn't really- I didn't love it. I didn't really enjoy it, but it was fun. I didn't- I wouldn't want to turn it off if, if it was on. Uh, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. That's like a B plus-ish, you know? Um, I, I don't know why. When I think it's like 7 out of 10, but I'm like, it's fine. 7 seems too high, but when I equivalent that to a B plus, it seems about right. Anyways. The next TV show I watched in October is one which you are all very familiar with if you guys have seen some other videos on my channel, The Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, this show, you can hear my thoughts on it in all of the other videos I did on this show. I did one video per episode, I'll link them all below, but they were just, that show was just brilliant. It was brilliant. Um, I am a huge fan of Mike Flanagan, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of a haunt The Haunting of Hill House, so I've been looking forward to The Haunting of Bly Manor for two years, um, and it was practically perfect, um, perfectly splendid, as Flora may say. Um, I would give it, I mean, an A+. It's an A+, for me. Um, I do like The Haunting of Hill House, as I said in my final video on the show. I give The Haunting of Hill House... I like it just a little bit more, but that's literally like Haunting of Hill House is a 100, while Haunting of Bly Manor is like a 99.5. Like, it's right up there. It's just, there was some episodes where it, I feel like it was a little slow, um, but also that's just kind of the style of it, but I still loved it. I still loved it. I was still captivated the whole time. Um, it was also just interesting watching the show kind of slower than I would usually. Like with The Haunting of Hill House, I buzzed through it in like three days. Meanwhile, with The Haunting of Bly Manor, since I was reacting to it, I kind of had to slow down and I only watched like on a Friday and Saturday, I watched like two episodes each day and then I waited a week and then I watched like three episodes and I don't remember how many episodes I watched per day of filming, but like I didn't watch as many as I would have if I hadn't been filming. But yeah, A+, plus, fantastic. Netflix should give Mike Flanagan all of the money to create more haunting anthology seasons series you know he deserves it and as long as he wants to do it i don't see any reason why it should end the next movie we watched is um a dan and mara's Hall 31 days of halloween movie and it's the one that both of the nightmare on elm street movies um that i've watched prior in this month was preparing for and that is a nightmare on elm street 3 dream warriors okay guys so this one was really good. I didn't love it as much as I loved the first one, but I did enjoy it more than the second one. I thought it was so fun. I was so excited when Heather Langen Langen Kemp. I'm sorry if that's not her last name, but that's I think that's what it is. Um, I was so excited when she showed up because I I didn't look at the cast list prior, so I was not aware she was going to be returning in the third movie. Um, and I loved. It just kind of the whole vibe of it. I loved the new uh, additions who came in um, to it. Patricia, a young Patricia Arquette was in it. 
okay, was not expecting that. Um, I loved the whole setting. I thought it was really fun. Um, I loved how it went into kind of the lore of how the whole dream stuff works, about how he's in your dreams and how all of them were able to kind of fight him in their dreams. I thought that was really interesting. Um, yeah, I would give A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors an 8 out of 10. I thought it was really enjoyable. The next movie I watched in October was actually kind of a strange one to be watching, um, but it'll make more sense in a second. It was Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. Now the reason I watched a Disney Christmas movie in October was because for the past year, ever since um, Disney Plus was first released, I've been watching um, a Disney animated movie every single Sunday um, in chronological order from Snow White up and I made a huge list and I've continued to it and I'm currently in the year 1999 um, about to actually today I'll be watching Dinosaur and that's the first movie of 2000 in my huge Disney rewatch primarily but also there's been a bunch of new movies um, new Disney animated movies, a lot of um, classics, not really classics, but like older ones like Saludos Amigos and Three Caballeros and Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas that were new for me, um, kind of the, some of the smaller older ones. And it was cute. It was delightful. Totally something I'd have on in the background, um, especially if there's like kids in the house or something. That's really, really fun. I give it a 7 out of 10. I'm pretty sure my favorite short was the one was Mickey and Minnie's. I really enjoyed theirs. I think that was the last one. But also I just love um, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. They're so fun. The next TV show that I finished in October was one that I started I think in September. Yeah, September seems about right. And this show, so far there's only one season of it out and it's actually an Apple TV Plus show. Last year when I got my parents a new um, Apple TV for Christmas. It gave us a whole free year of Apple TV Plus that I've been utilizing. Um, and yeah, the TV show is C, uh, with it's starring Jason Momoa, and that's the only actor I recognize from it. I didn't recognize any of the other actors, but it was so interesting. I, I didn't love it necessarily, but I really, really, really enjoyed it. It was so well made. The story and the world were so captivating and it was nothing like, I, I haven't seen anything like it before. It was pretty much, without giving spoilers, about this world where this like pandemic <laughs> happened and it basically wiped out a huge amount of the human race except for a select few and everyone who survived was bl became blind pretty much and so then the the show takes place i think hundreds of years after that whole pandemic or whatever happened and so the remaining population on earth are all completely blind um all of the future kids that are getting born are all blind um they're not even they don't even speak of seeing of like being able to see with your eyes that's considered like witchcraft pretty much or like you're a like you are like a heretic or something if you even mention seeing or like books or anything that could be done with your eyes or anything and th they've gone really down to kind of like not cavemen but like you know just very hunt like hunting fishing they live in it's it's all gone way down they're not in like any type of modern society anymore it's so interesting i don't want to say any more than that but if you have apple tv plus i would give it a watch I'm definitely excited to see what happens in season two. It's so well made. Jason Momoa is great. Um, the two young actors that are in it, that I'm not going to tell you anything about them, but they're great. Um, it's not perfect. There are some moments where it's kind of slow, and I'm kind of like, okay, what's what's going on? But I think I think it's just it has a lot of potential and I'm very excited to see where it goes and I'm really hoping it gets a second season. I haven't really heard much of what's going on with the Apple TV Plus shows. I know um, Dickinson, which I watched last year and loved, I know they're getting a second season but other than that, I don't really know what's going on with the other Apple TV Plus shows. I think I heard that the uh, Shyamalan show, what's his name? M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, he has a show on Apple TV Plus, and I think that one's getting a second season. I haven't seen it yet. I want to, though. And maybe the morning show's getting a second season? 
don't quote me on that. I don't know. I haven't seen the morning show yet. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know what's happening with C, but I haven't heard that they've been canceled. So I really hope they're given an, a second season because it definitely led up for them to have a second season. I would give C uh, an A. Um, if it had been a, a little bit quicker or faster paced in a couple of episodes, it'd be an A+. Plus. Um, but where they left it, it's definitely a solid A. The other TV show that I started in October and am nowhere near finishing yet is Star Wars The Clone Wars. I've been watching it in chronological order, like story-wise. So I haven't been watching it in release order. Um, because I saw in like a Star Wars article that it's recommended to watch it in chronological chronological order, um, which some uh, some of that means that like I'm going like okay three episodes in season one and then an episode in season three and then an episode in season two and then two more episodes in season one it's all over the place and it's kind of tricky but I'm really enjoying it I think that's the way I'm going to stick with watching it just because I'm 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 a huge fan of Star Wars but I'm not as familiar with some of the lore about the Clone War Clone Wars era um as I want to be I'm not like a deep dive type fan who like knows everything about Star Wars. I'm just, I'm not, but then I'm also not a casual fan. Like I'm like right in the middle of casual and like huge, huge biggest fan you could be. Like I'm where, like I love the movies. I love the Mandalorian. I'm loving Clone Wars, but I don't know everything about the world. I don't know every planet. I don't know about all of the Easter eggs of when that character pops up in that thing and that thing. Sadly, I don't. I wish I did. I just don't have enough time to know that much. So I thought, anyways, I thought that watching in the chronological order of when each episode happened, I thought that would have been a little less confusing for me because I felt like, okay, if I'm watching something from in season three and then all of a sudden it pops up to something that technically happened at the same time as something in season one, I would be a little thrown off or confused. I was just worried that would happen, so I just stuck with watching in chronological order, and I'm really enjoying it. I'd say, because I can't, I'm not really finished with any season yet because I've been jumping around, um, but I'd say I'm about 8% done with the show. I've been watching it pretty slowly. I was watching it um, in preparation of knowing who Ahsoka Tano was in case she pops up in The Mandalorian Season 2, because um, that has been confirmed online that she's probably going to pop up. So I wanted to have as much of a familiarity with her as a character as possible. So yeah, I'm not not nearly done with Star Wars The Clone Wars, but so far I'd give it an A-. minus. I think it's pretty delightful. It's, it's fun. The next movie that I watched in October is another one that was a preparation movie for one of the Dan and Mara's 31 Days of Halloween. Um, and it was another one that I wa I've been wanting to watch for so long and I finally got to Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. I have been looking forward to that movie for so long and I thought I was gonna love it. It seemed right up my alley and I didn't really like it which makes me so sad because I wanted to love it so much. It seemed so goofy and so fun and it was just it was campy yeah but it wasn't like it was just kind of slow and just kind of boring I'm so sorry to say. I'm, I'm sorry if you're a Friday the 13th fan, but I really didn't like it. Yeah, I'd give Friday the 13th a 6 out of 10. I'm so sorry. The next movie I watched in October was another movie that was preparing for a Dan and Mars 31 Days of Halloween movie, which was Friday the 13th Part 2, which, just like the first one, I didn't really like. I kind of saw it as pretty much the same thing as the first one campy and just kind of slow and boring to me. Spoilers to Friday the 13th part 2, I'll leave a little thing here, but I thought it was actually really interesting how Jason had a whole shrine to his dead mother's uh, head. That was interesting, but that was pretty much all. The final girl in it, I don't remember her name, but she was pretty good. But other than that, I would give uh, Friday the 13th 2 also a 6 out of 10. The next movie I watched in October was the second movie in the letter Letterboxd Film Club I'm in, which was kind of their spooky movie of the month, Blythe Spirit, which I'd never heard of before. It's a movie from the 40s, and I really enjoyed it. I had so much fun with it. Uh, it's just about this guy who is getting kind of haunted by the ghost of his ex-wife, and he's like talking with this... Um, 
uh, psychic or this uh, medium to try and get the ghost of his ex-wife to go away and it is just so delightful. Um, I really enjoyed it and I also figured out that they're remaking the movie with uh, Dan Stevens who I'm a huge huge fan of Dan Stevens um, along with a couple other really well-known actresses. I can't remember who exactly but um, I'll leave the poster for it right there. I'm so excited to watch the remake and I really enjoyed um, the original 1945 Blythe Spirit. I would give it an 8 out of 10. The next TV show that I watched in October is actually I started watching as it premiered The Spanish Princess Season 2. There's only been I think three episodes that have come out so far. I've been watching them weekly but I'm really enjoying it so far. I really enjoyed season one and season two is so far right up there with being super duper good. I'm really really interested in the whole history of uh, King Henry VIII and his six wives. Um, I'm a huge fan of Six the Musical. I watched the show The Tudors um, back from like April to July I believe or something or no, actually I think it was from like June to August <laughs> that I watched The Tudors, but I, yeah, I love that time in history. I think it's so interesting. Um, so I, whenever The Spanish Princess first came out, when did The Spanish Princess first come out? It was like, okay, it was, okay, so it was almost two years ago um, that The Fa Spanish Princess first came out, and I, ever since then, I've pretty much just been captured by that time period. It was right around when I was getting into Sixth the Musical, and I, it's been so fascinating seeing kind of some of the history behind um, Catherine of Aragon, even though, yeah, some of it is um, dramatized for TV, it is still super duper fun to watch and super duper interesting. So, so far, I give season two an A. The next movie I watched in October was one of the Dan and Mara's 31 Days of Halloween uh, movies, which was Freddy vs. Jason, which all of the Friday 13th movies I watched was preparing for that one, as well as all of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, and it was goofy. It was fun, but it wasn't that good. Um, I, I had, it had moments. Um, I really enjoyed Catherine Isabel in the movie, even though she had a pretty small part, but she was the star in Ginger Snaps, which I love. I love Ginger Snaps. I watched that for the first time last October, I believe. And yeah, so it was, it was fine. I give it a 6 out of 10. The next movie I watched in October was one of Dana Mara's 31 Days of Halloween movies. This one I loved, um, An American Werewolf in London. I loved this movie. I thought it was so good. I've been meaning to watch it for a long time. Um, and yeah, it was just so delightful. And it's been a while since I've watched a werewolf movie, so I had a really, really fun time with it. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. I wholeheartedly enjoyed it. 9 out of 10. The next TV show I watched in October was um, the new show that came out, I believe, at the beginning of October, Emily in Paris. I don't really know what I think of Emily in Paris. There's part of me that really enjoyed it, and there's part of me that didn't enjoy it. I don't know. I think I watched it because it seemed really fun. It was. It's by the same writer as Sex in the City. Um, a lot of people were talking about it, and I'm also a really big fan of Lily Collins. Um, I love her in the Mortal Instruments movie, as well as Love, Rosie. I believe that's the that other movie she's in with Sam Claflin. Yeah, um, if that's not the title, I'll put the poster right here. Um, but yeah, I don't know what I thought of this show. I need to, I think, see a season two to really determine my thoughts. I didn't really like Emily as a character. She just seemed really kind of stuck up in a lot of ways. You guys can go watch so many anal analysis videos on Emily in Paris and the problems with it. Um, I thought there was definitely some fun moments. I liked Ashley Park in it. I'm a big fan of her from Mean Girls the Musical. And it was definitely fun. It, it was cute. It wasn't really, I'd say, bad. It just had some parts of it where I was like, why didn't that go anywhere? Like, why did Emily not really grow? Like, they left her at the beginning of the show with so much growth she needed to do just in kind of how she was as a person and then by the end she was still that same person maybe they're just trying to go for like growth in the long haul like in a season two or season three maybe but yeah it was just it wasn't all i wanted it to be i'd give emily in paris um a b plus the next movie i watched in october was 
actually the movie I finished or I started or I watched <laughs> right after I finished uh, Sex and the City, which was the Sex and the City movie, which a lot of people hate. But as someone who loved the show, I really, really enjoyed it. I loved it. I thought it was really fun. Uh, the only thing I didn't love about it, spoiler right here for the Sex and the City movie, so mute me or fast forward if you don't want to get any Sex and the City movie spoilers, but um, Samantha breaking up with Smith Jared. Like, I know that she's like a free, a free woman. She doesn't stay with a man, but like, come on. I would have loved to see her growth that after so long of like not wanting to stay with a man, she commits to staying with Smith Jared and she finds a life with him and is happy with him. I would have loved to see it. I would have loved to see it. So yeah, I loved everything else about the movie. That was the only part I didn't like just because I wanted Smith Jared to stay in the big picture with all the other guys. Pretty much how I've come to terms with that is that everything else about the movie and the second movie is canon except for Samantha's storyline. Uh, her storyline ended with a show where she is with Smith Jared, or even halfway through the movie where she's with Smith, Smith Jared. Her storyline ends at New Year's Eve in the movie when she's still with Smith Jared. That's all for Sex and the City spoilers. Unapologetically, I give it a 10 out of 10. I'm so sorry, but I do. <laughs> the next movie I watched in October was a preparation movie for Dana Mara's 31 Days of Halloween, um, which was the evil dead and okay guys here's the thing with the evil dead guys i have avoided this movie for so long because the poster is terrifying so i thought the movie was terrifying little did i know that it's actually hilarious and yeah it is very creepy and has a lot of spooky moments but i so 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 enjoyed it i thought it was so fun and so good and just so weird and I definitely want to give it a rewatch at some point maybe with my parents since I think my mom said she hasn't even seen the whole thing I don't know I just want to watch it again and watch the sequel again spoiler alert I watched the sequel in this month as well which I'll get to in a minute but yeah the evil dead I would give a 9 out of 10 the next TV show that I started in October and haven't finished yet is season 9 of American Horror Story uh, their 1984 season from last year which I hadn't gotten around to watching yet um, I'm curious there's usually like a new American Horror Story season every year and there wasn't one this year Was that because of corona I don't know I don't know why there wasn't a new season, but yeah, I've been watching American Horror Story since I was a sophomore in high school, so four years ago, I believe? I don't know time anymore, but yeah, I binged like the first five seasons of that show, maybe six, I don't remember, um, all within like a couple months of each other back in my sophomore year, like 2017 or something. Um, and I loved, for the most part, loved it. I loved Murder House, I loved Asylum, I loved Coven. Um, those three seasons especially I loved. Um, everything after that, there's been ups and downs of my enjoyment. But yeah, so I've just been casually just watching as the seasons come out. I haven't been rushing to watch it, but yeah, so I'm about actually only about two or three episodes in 1984 and it's fun. It's actually very much a spoof of Friday the, thir the 13th which I was not expecting and I'm actually really glad that I watched um, a couple of the Friday the 13th movies before before starting um, the season because it made me really aware of what I was watching. I was watching this and I was like oh this is Friday the 13th. This is totally, like, I knew it was going to be kind of a spoof on, like, slashers in the 80s, but I was not expecting it to be Friday the 13th, American Horror Story style with Emma Roberts and the guy from Glee, Will Schuster, is in it, which, <laughs> that threw me off. But yeah, so I'm a little bit into it, and it's fun. I wouldn't necess necessarily say it's bad. I'm captivated by what's happening, and they're so far doing a lot better than the teenagers in Friday the 13th do. So far, I'd give it a B+. Plus. It's fun. The next movie I watched in October was Evil Dead 2, which this one I was a lot more excited to watch than I was with 
um, The Evil Dead because I was terrified going into The Evil Dead, but this one I knew what I was getting myself into. I knew it was just going to be goofy, silly, it wasn't going to be all traumatizing like I thought it was going to be just from the posters, and it was good. I think I need to give it a rewatch. I didn't love it as much as I loved The Evil Dead, which is weird because so many people love Evil Dead 2 more than The Evil Dead, so I think I need to give it a rewatch in a, mo in a month where I'm way less crowded when it comes to stuff I'm watching. Um, yeah, I so far would give it an 8 out of 10, but I definitely wanted to get up to that 9 or 10 status along with the first movie. Um, but yeah, 8 out of 10 for now. The next movie I watched in October was another movie in Dan and Mara's 31 Days of Halloween, the original Candyman from the 90s. I was really excited to watch Candyman uh, since I know that there's a new Candyman movie coming out or it was supposed to come out this past October and it's now going to be coming out next October. Um, I thought it was good. Um, it was really an interesting concept, um, not like any other movies I'd seen before. I would give Candyman an 8 out of 10. The next movie I watched in October was another one of my Sunday Disney animated movie watches and it, this one was a rewatch and a beloved rewatch of mine, the Tigger movie. I loved all of the Winnie the Pooh movies that came out in the late 90s to early 2000s. Um, when I was little I watched them all the time. I've seen all of them probably a thousand times. Um, especially the Tigger movie. That one made me cry when I was younger. Um, if you've seen the Tigger movie you know why. Just the heartbreak um, that Tigger goes through six-year-old me couldn't handle it. Um, 19-year-old me also couldn't handle it. <laughs> it was so good. Yes, I have a lot of nostalgia for it. If I didn't have so much nostalgia for Winnie the Pooh and the Hundred Acre Woods and all of those characters, and if I didn't have as much nostalgia as I do for these movies, I don't know if I'd love them as much as I do, but I love uh, the Tigger movie and all of those early, early 2000s Winnie the Pooh movies. I give the Tigger movie a 10 out of 10. The next TV show that I started in October is actually a rewatch for the most part for me. Um, I started rewatching Doctor Who with my friend Emma. Uh, she was starting to rewatch Doctor Who and she was telling me about it and I was like, I've actually been wanting to rewatch it too. I watched the first, I believe six maybe seven seasons. It was whenever Matt Smith dropped off. I watched all the way from the beginning until Matt Smith dropped off. Um, back when I was in seventh grade, maybe eighth grade, seventh or eighth, maybe both. I don't know. But um, I loved it. I was obsessed with Doctor Who. I would literally wake up crying thinking about some of the major storylines of some of the latter seasons of Doctor Who. Um, it was such a influential show for me back in middle school, so I've been very excited getting to start it again, and I may continue past Matt Smith if I'm really feeling like it. I may go into the next guy and then go into the girl. I know there's a girl now. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's a new season of Doctor Who premiere like going on right now because of Corona, but I know it's still on the air. I don't think it's been canceled or anything, but um. But yeah, so I may I may continue if I feel like I want to, but I'm very excited to be going from the beginning again, at least from uh, Christopher Eccleston, I believe is his name. I'm so sorry if that's not his name. Um, uh, but you know, the one who first starts out with Billy Piper, nine. Yeah, Doctor Who number nine. But I've been really excited to go back from there to refresh myself on the mechanics of the Doctor and of the TARDIS and of how it all works and to refresh myself on all of the companions. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. There's a there's a part of me that kind of gets that Doctor Who, Doctor Who hate, which is how, how ridiculous it is, because it is ridiculous. It's very campy. It's very just melodramatic in a lot of ways, but it's so fun, and there's so many genuinely great moments of the show and such good storylines, and the actors are all fantastic in their roles. So yeah, I am a little bit into season two of the show, and I would give it because I've seen so much of the show from what all I've seen in the past, I would give it an A-. minus. The next TV show that I started in October was, as so many people started this month, The Mandalorian Season 2. Um, there's actually, there's two episodes out right now, but I haven't seen the second episode yet, but I love The Mandalorian so much. So, so good. Uh, when Baby Yoda was first revealed and no, that's not a spoiler anymore. The entire world knows about Baby Yoda. Um, 
I cried when I saw that little baby. He's adorable. He's my favorite part of the show, obviously. Um, but everything about it, the first episode was fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm so excited to see where it goes. It's an A plus so far for me. The next TV show that I started in October and haven't finished yet is the show that I believe came out in September, maybe the beginning of October, the show Ratched, starring Sarah Paulson, the prequel show about Nurse Ratched from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, this show is really, really interesting so far. I've seen the first two episodes, um, and I'm really captivated by it. I have read, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I read that in high school, um, and I've seen the movie, and I really enjoy both the book and the movie, so I was really excited to see what they were going to do with a prequel about the nurse, and Sarah Paulson, as always, is killing it so far in the role. Um, also... Miranda from Sex and the City is in it, which I did not know going in, so that was very exciting to see uh, her friendly face in the show. But yeah, I'm I'm really interested in it so far. So far, I would give it an A. And the last TV show that I started in October that I haven't finished yet is the big show that's been going on since I believe August, Lovecraft Country on HBO. This show is so good so far. Um, I've only watched, oh god, I think I've only watched one or two episodes, sad to say. I've just been so busy uh, the last week or so, so I haven't really been able to continue um, as fast as I'd want to, especially since there's only one season out. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm not at the point where I'm like loving it yet. I think that's going to come with maybe a couple more episodes but I would give it so far an A, but I'm, I guarantee by later on in the season, that'll bump up to an A+. You'll see it in my what I watched in November, well, I'll probably talk about it again, because I'll have probably been finishing it at that, in that month, because it's this month, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, we're finally on to the last day of October. October 31st, Halloween. I watched a bunch of stuff just because, you know, with Corona, there's not much going on for Halloween, especially in my town. Um, no, There were no trick-or-treaters, so I just watched um, a bunch of movies. Um, and the first one I watched, I watched with my mom, and we watched, it was a rewatch for me, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, my mom, it was her first time watching it. I think she, she said she'd seen like bits and pieces of it before, but this is her first time watching it all the way through. I loved it. I love The Nightmare Before Christmas. I give The Nightmare Before Christmas a 9 out of 10. My mom, not so much. My, I, she can't figure out why she doesn't really enjoy the movie so much. She just doesn't. Don't attack my mom, please. It's just not, the movie just isn't her thing. Um, I don't know what a rating of it is, but I give it a 9 out of 10. And the next movie that I watched on Halloween, this one isn't really a movie because it's only 30 minutes, but I'm counting it as a movie. And this was also a rewatch I did with my mom after we finished The Nightmare Before Christmas. It was kind of spur of the moment, but we watched It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, which is kind of a yearly thing we do, which I'd kind of forgotten about until we saw it. It was like free on Apple TV Plus, and we were like, oh, let's watch it. Um, but yeah, I adore um, The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. I've seen it a bajillion times. Um, I love it. It's one of my favorite things in the world, both it and um, the Christmas Charlie Brown movie. I can't remember what it's called, if there's like a name for it. Shoot. I'm so sorry. I don't remember the name of it, but but yeah, I just, the Charlie Brown little movies back from the 80s? 70s? I don't know what decade they're from, but I love them so, 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 so much. I grew up on them, so what, getting to watch that again was just one of the happiest moments of my Halloween that obviously gets a 10 out of 10 for me and a 10 out of 10 for my mom. And the last, the last movie I watched in October was my last movie from Dan and Mara's 31 Days of Halloween, which was Trick or Treat, Trick or Treat, uh, which I'd never seen before. Um, it's a horror movie from like 2008, I believe, uh, which I'd actually been really excited to watch and I thought it was good. I didn't love it as much as I wanted to, but I thought it was very interesting and the storyline was not what I was expecting it to be at all. I would give Trick or Treat a 7 out of 10. And 
to anyone who could be watching who's a part of the Dan Merle and Mara community who also participated in 31 Days of Halloween along with me, uh, the reason I didn't mention the other movies a part of the list is because I've already seen them. And I was already watching so many movies this month, I skipped over the ones I've already seen. So for any viewer's context who wants to know, the other movies that were a part of Dana and Mara's 31 Days of Halloween, which I'd already seen prior to October, were Doctor Sleep, Us, Sleepy Hollow, Ready or Not, The Lost Boys, Cabin in the Woods, Halloween, Scream, Happy Death Day, The Addams Family, Carrie, Silence of the Lambs, Pan's Labyrinth, Pan's Labyrinth, the Thing, The Babadook, Shaun of the Dead. Ooh, I also watched The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I watched that the day before October 1st, so yeah. And that was it. Everything else was a first time watch for me in regards to Dana Mars 31 Days of Halloween. Um, to anyone who isn't a part of the Dana Merle community, I highly recommend you guys go give his channel um, a look. I'll leave him linked down in the, sub in the description, but so I have a big surprise for you guys. Um, this is a new addition to my family that we got in the middle of me filming Haunting of Bly Manor that I wanted to wait till after Bly Manor to show you guys. I got a kitten. <laughs> she just woke up from a nap. Her name is Ophelia. She just turned three months old um, and she's the love of my life. I love her so much. Um, she doesn't want to stay in the video for too long. <laughs> yeah, she's so, I love her so much and prepare to see her in a lot more of my videos. She'll probably be, oh, there's her fur. There she is. Oh, let's not get on my computer. Let's not get on my computer. Let's go this way. Look, look at her guys. Look at how cute. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. You don't want to look at the camera, don't you? <laughs> she wants to look anywhere but the camera. Okay. Uh, over here. There you go. But yeah, she's probably going to be popping up into a bunch of my videos, just walking in on me as I watch a movie or TV show and react to it for you guys. So prepare for that. That'll be fun. Um, but yeah, that's my... Careful. But yeah, that was my big surprise. I got a kitten, Ophelia. She's so cute and I love her so much. Prepare for her to be the guest star of my videos. And now she's getting into stuff. I have to go get her. Hold on. Yeah. That's it for this video. That took a lot longer than I actually expected it to. I expected I would be able to fly through those, but I just watched so much this month. I guarantee my November uh, movies I watched in mo November list will be a lot shorter. Um, I've already, I haven't even watched, I've watched one movie this month um, and I will be watching more. I've just been kind of taking a break after how much that month was, especially horror-wise. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of exciting videos planned for you guys, for anyone who watched uh, my Devil All The Time video, Invisible Man, or Bly Manor. I have a lot more movie and TV show reactions planned for you guys. I'm not gonna do another TV show for a, a little bit, just because TV shows are a lot. I always feel like I need to do them in order. So I wanna kinda have some movies in between and then may, I may start doing a mo like a TV show in the middle of a move of doing movies. I don't know, we're gonna figure it out. If you guys have any movie or TV show reactions that you guys wanna see me do, please leave a comment down below. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for the support you've given me over the past month. It's been almost a month since I uploaded my Devil All The Time video and I have not expected how much um, good, how many good responses I've gotten to my Ply Manor series and Invisible Man and Devil All The Time, how many new subscribers I've gotten. I've gotten over a hundred. Um, who knows how many I'll, how many more I'll have gotten before I upload this video. Just the amount of praise I've gotten from you guys and just good feedback on my Ply Manor videos is just fantastic to me. Thank you so much to all my new viewers. I hope you're watching this video. I know it's different than my other videos. It's not a reaction. It's more just a sit down video. I hope I was entertaining enough for you. I hope this concept was entertaining. Even if I don't get that many views or much praise on this video like I hope I do, I'm still going to do it every month just because I want to. I like summary videos like this. It's very organ- oh, there's Ophelia! <laughs> So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it because it's not leaving. Um, but don't worry, 
more reactions are coming. Please follow me on social media. On Instagram, I'm at Rachel Rimini. And on Twitter, I'm at Rachel underscore Rimini. And I'll link it here again at Letterbox, just my name, Rachel Rimini. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And go check out my Bly Manor reaction series as well as Invisible Man and Devil All the Time. I definitely have a lot more not horror themed movies planned. I'm gonna step away from horror for a bit, move on to some other genres. But yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye. <laughs> Hi.